Today is ceiling wiring and some other stuff. Amanda's out here just basking in her little lizard tank. So we're running pretty much everything in our bus on separate home runs. The only exception is our four puck lights that we're putting in the ceiling. Those are gonna be daisy chained together. Um, but so far, the only thing that we are running into our ceiling is the puck light daisy chain, the- Solar panel and ceiling fan. Materials we are using. This red wire and this black wire, 14 gauge, weighing like 70 pounds each. Zip ties that have these little holes for screws so we can just screw it to the walls. Conduit, both tiny and big. Don't forget the tape. And the tape. Okay, that is all the holes for real. There's one right there on the other side. This beam gonna come out there through there, and through this beam, which we've already tested the split through. We spent a lot of time planning our electrical system, mapping out where everything would go on paper, and then taping that out in the bus. We then decided to just do the ceiling electrical and leave the rest of the system for when the rest of the bus is framed. This made the process a lot less daunting, as we didn't need to think 10 steps ahead, and could just focus on the task at hand. Those are our four puck lights, as well as ceiling fan, which is going to go in this little vent hole that was already there. With the wiring complete, we started work on the ceiling insulation. The table saw made quick work, cutting our eight foot sheets down to five inch strips, and the chop saw cut those down to fit between the ribs of the bus. Right, ready to throw these guys up there. Okay. <laughs> We cut the strips a little longer than the gap between the ribs so they would hold themselves in place. Our 5 inch strips were used at the sides where the curve of the ceiling was tightest, but we used 10 inch strips at the top so we would have fewer things to worry about. The last strip in the curve ended up being skinnier than the others, so we ripped one down for that exact measurement. Insulation is finished. Um, so yeah, we managed to finish that yesterday as well as all of the electrical that's going in the ceiling. Yep. And now we are going to start putting on some one by four tongue and groove cedar planks that we got this morning. Yay! Hold on, first. We have to take off this back panel. Ooh, and this back. We took these panels off so we could run our cedar planks all the way to the first and last rib of the bus, so they'd have a solid starting and ending point. To install the tongue and groove cedar, we used a high-powered nail gun with some sturdy nails that can pierce metal, as well as some Vulcan adhesive. Looks good! Yeah. Alternating glue and nail every other rib, and offsetting the pattern on the next layer of planks. This allowed us to have fewer nails to deal with during finishing, but gave a super strong connection. On the tightest curve, we had to rip off the back half of the groove in order for the planks to make the bend. But once we got to the shallower curve, we could just knock the pieces together with a hammer and a wood block. Okay, so we're almost done. We're on our last board. <laughs> last board for tonight. <laughs> We're going to show you how we did this bit right here. <laughs> we put in our lights. Well, the holes for our lights. Uh, we thought that we could just kind of drill a bigger hole into our hole, but we were wrong. So we're pulling these off. Luckily, it's just one board down. Okay.
So we are down to this last board right in the middle. So we're gonna rip one down to two inches and then we're gonna try and put this bevel on uh, our new piece so it matches perfectly. Okay, we are on the last piece of the ceiling. It's wider here than it is down there. And so we're trying to come up with the best way for us to uh, chop that up. Here to give a tour of our fantastical plan. Yes. So it all started when my mom met my dad. And they had me and I was a genius who thought of drawing this black line, starting at two inch width down here to two and five sixteenths over here. Basically clamped it down the width that the saw needs. It's like a tapered. That's where my genius stops. I'm gonna let Owen take it away. <laughs> <laughs> we basically measured the distance between the edge of the saw and the blade and uh, put this as a fence that the edge of the saw can butt up against. And that way we can just have a completely straight line, clamp everything down tight, and uh, make sure it follows that taper perfectly. Exactly like I said. Precisely. <laughs> Second to last day on the ceiling. So exciting. If you watch closely, you can see the lizard turning on her lamp. She does this whenever she's cold, especially in the winter. There she goes. You don't want to disturb her while she's turning on her lamp. While Amanda is sanding, I'm gonna be going through with this and uh, setting all of our nails into the woods so that we can then putty over them and make it a nice clean finish. Okay, while Amanda finishes off the sanding, I'm gonna start scribing our template for these curved pieces that are gonna go on these skylight trims. the class what we're doing today. Sniffing glue. <laughs> now we are varnishing the ceiling. Uh, basically just gonna make it look all pretty and in addition this adds like a waterproofing layer which since we have a bathroom in our bus and we'll have shower steam is important so it doesn't rot the wood over time. Well, hello again, and welcome. So at this point, uh, we've had a drink or two. I don't really understand why this happens, 
But basically, when you varnish wood, for some reason it like, okay, so you sand the wood, right? And then like, it becomes super smooth. But then when you varnish it, it like raises the grain, so it like makes it not smooth again. And so we have to sand it to make it smooth again, and then varnish, and for some reason, this time we varnish, it won't raise the grain. And so we'll have smooth but varnished wood. Well, uh, that might do it. Well, wait, maybe some shots of the uh, last coat of stain. But who cares, you've already seen like two coats. You should show them the sanded side. It looks exactly the same. This is how it feels. Ooh, soft. So now that you know how it feels, you know what it's like to be sanded. And that's gonna be all that we're gonna do. So with that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I have to post to your Instagram. Thanks for watching.